In this Cricut tutorial, I am showing you how to DIY a welcome mat or like a doormat with the help of your Cricut cutting machine. So let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, where I show you crafty tips, tricks, and tutorials every single week. So if you're new around here, well then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that little bell for all the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single crafty minute, especially today because y'all, we are DIYing our own welcome mat or doormat or whatever you want to call it with the help of our Cricut cutting machine right here. I am so excited. We're actually in the process of moving. So obviously we need a new doormat for our new front porch right <laughs> now to make all this happen we're gonna need a few materials and that includes the starcraft hd the hd stands for high durability the starcraft hd permanent adhesive vinyl i literally have so many different types of permanent vinyl and this is honestly my all-time favorite like this is my go-to the quality is way up there all of the colors come in both glossy and matte finishes. And not only that, but the price point is just mind-blowingly good. You can get like a 12 inch by five foot roll of this stuff for $2.85. No joking, $2.85. On top of that, you can use my code, which is crafty, to save an additional 5% on your entire order from 143vinyl.com. And that's actually where I get all of my StarCraft HD permanent vinyl. It's just all around amazing. Now to go with that, we are obviously gonna need a transfer tape and I'm using this clear medium tack transfer tape right here. This is also from 143vinyl.com. So that means you can still use the crafty code to save an additional 5% and you know also help support this channel at the same time. I've literally tried so many different types of transfer tape and this is the best in my opinion. Like I love this stuff. We are also gonna need a doormat, right? And I'm using this one right here from Ikea. This is the 16 inches by 24 inch doormat, uh, the core or queer doormat. Still don't know exactly how to pronounce it, but this is the smaller of the two doormats that they sell. It's super affordable. It's only like three or four dollars, I want to say. And this is actually going to look really, really great layered on top of another doormat that I want to have on our front porch. So I'm really, really excited for that. We are also gonna need some Flex Seal. Now, so many of y'all have asked in the past if an outdoor paint will work for this. And technically, yes, as long as you use like a sealant, it should be okay. But if you want something that's gonna last a really long time, go for the Flex Seal. This stuff is amazing. Many people think that this is just like a spray paint and it's not. This is actually a liquid rubber that you can spray onto a surface. And trust me when I say that it holds up so good. I made my mom a doormat about a year ago or so and it still looks great like obviously the doormat itself has a lot of wear and tear but wherever the flex seal is it still looks just as good as new like it's so so cool and i highly highly recommend just opting for this and i'm actually using the black and the yellow colors right here and last but definitely not least we are also going to need an svg cut file so let's hop over to designbundles.net and i'll show you the one that i'm going for so this is the SVG cut file that we're using for today's project and I'm honestly in love with it. Sunflowers are super on trend this year and I'm actually gonna be pairing this with a vertical porch sign that I will be making on the Design Bundles YouTube channel this coming up week, most likely on Tuesday. So if you're watching this in the future, then you can honestly just go ahead and go over to the Design Bundles YouTube channel and check out that video. I will have that linked for you all down in the description box below once it is available. So this is what we're gonna go with. So let's hop over to Cricut Design Space and get started. All right, so as you can see, I already had this downloaded from designbundles.net and uploaded into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you're new to all this and you're not entirely sure how to go about doing that, how to actually download an SVG cut file or a font from designbundles.net or fontbundles.net and how to actually get that uploaded into Cricut Design Space, I got you covered. I have a step-by-step -step video that I will link for you right up here, as well as down in the description box below. But as far as this project today, what I'm gonna do first off is come over here to the right-hand side of the page in this layers panel. And I am going to, first of all, actually ungroup this. So I'm gonna come up here right above the actual, the actual SVG cut file and select ungroup. And what I'm gonna do now is come through here and hold down my shift key and select all of these letters. 
And I'm also going to select this little brown center of the sunflower as well. Because, well, I don't have a brown flex seal paint, and plus the brown wouldn't show up too well on that doormat anyway. So I'm going to actually make the center of the sunflower black as well. So what I'm going to do is now come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on weld. There we go. And now what we can do is simply click and drag over all of this and then come back up here towards the top right hand side of the page and click on group. All right, so what we need to do now is simply resize this to fit onto our doormat. Now, my favorite way of going about doing that is with a template. So let's come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on shapes. And let's open up a square. There we go. Now the color of our template does not amount to a hill of beans as you all well know, but I always like to change the color of this just to kind of help resemble the color of the surface that we'll be applying this to. It just kind of helps people learn a little bit better that way, or at least that's what y'all tell me. So let's just go with it. So to change the color of this, I'm coming up here towards the top left hand side of the page, clicking on this little color swatch and just changing this to brown. There we go. So now let's go ahead and change the measurements of this as well by coming up here towards the top of the canvas right here where it says size and I'm going to click on this little padlock right here and basically by doing that we're unlocking the proportions so now we can actually put it in a different measurement for the width versus the height if we didn't unlock that it would just keep the same proportions and if I put in 16 inches for the height it would change the width to be 16 inches as well which obviously would not work so let's go ahead and come over here to width clear out those numbers and put in here 24 for 24 inches wide, which is the size of our, of our actual doormat. And for the height, let's go in here and put in here 16 or 16 inches. Now this is obviously pretty big for our screen. So what I'm going to do is first off actually right click this and then select send it back. And now I'm going to come down here towards the bottom left hand side of the page and just zoom out just a little bit. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is simply click on our design and then just drag this right over top of our template and simply click on this little resize handle right here and then just drag this outwards like so. Now I'm actually gonna be cutting out my design on this cutting mat right here. Now, the reason for that is because, well, this design is already close to 21 and a half inches long, okay? The maximum cutting size for this, however, is 23 and a half inches long. We could go ahead and cut this out onto smaller 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mats. That is a possibility. However, I've got to warn you that whenever you slice up your design and try to piece it together on a surface like this doormat, it's pretty tedious. No joking, no lying. I'm just I'm just forewarning you right now. I have done it in a certain video over on Auntie Tay's channel, and I will have that linked for you all down in that description box below in case you're interested. But again, it's it's pretty tedious. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over here and click on our template and go ahead and click on this little red X up here in the top left because well, we don't really need that template anymore. However, what I am gonna do now is open up a new template, and that's by coming over here to the left hand side of the page clicking on shapes and opening up a square. Now this template is gonna resemble our 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. Now the maximum cutting size again for that mat is 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches, even though it is a 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. Now the size that we're gonna to need to make this is the 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches. Again, the color of this doesn't amount to a hill of beans, but if it helps you see it a little bit better or understand it a little bit better, I'm completely okay with doing that. So let's come up here, click on this little color swatch and then just change this to green to resemble our cutting mat. All right, so now let's come up here to the top of the page, right here where it says size. I'm gonna click on this little padlock to unlock the proportions and let's change the width to 23.5 and the height to be 11.5. There we go. And I'm gonna right click this and then select send to back. All right, so this template is also gonna serve as a stencil for our design. So basically we're gonna to have to create a stencil with our vinyl, and then we're gonna actually spray that stencil down with our flex seal to create the design we want to on our actual doormat. Now, what I'm gonna do is actually come over here to the right hand side of the page, click on this little sunflower right here. I'm actually gonna click on this little, this eye icon to the right hand side of it to basically just hide that. And now what I'm gonna do is simply click and drag over all this come up here towards the top of the page, click align, and then click on center. There we go. 
And now since both of those layers are selected, we only have two layers selected. So what I'm gonna do is come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on slice. And that's basically acting like a cookie cutter of sorts. All right, so we can basically go ahead and move our little stencil or template or whatever you wanna call it out of the way here. And we can take this, move this out of the way and delete that out because well, we don't need that anymore. And now what we're gonna do is go ahead and come over here to the left hand side of the page and click on shapes again, open up a square. We're gonna do the same exact thing. We're gonna make this as a template for the yellow portion of our sunflower. So to do that, I'm gonna come back up here, change the color real quick to green. And then for the sizing on this, we will cut this out on just a normal 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat. So what I'm gonna do is come up here and go ahead and change out the width to 11.5. And since that padlock is locked, I went ahead and changed the height to be 11 and a half inches as well. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is simply right click our little template or stencil and then select send it back. And we can now simply click on our little scent flower here and then just drag this right into place over top of our template. And I'm gonna click and drag over both of these, come up here towards the top of the canvas, select align, and then select center. And now since we only have two layers selected, we can obviously slice that by coming down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and clicking on slice. There we go. So we can go ahead and delete all this out right here. And now we have both of our templates or both of our stencils that we're gonna to use to lay down onto our doormat and actually paint our design onto the doormat with. So for this, what I'm gonna do is come over here to the top right hand side of the page and click on make it. All right, so we can now see our design right here on our 12 inch by 24 inch cutting mat. And over here is our other mat, which is just the 12 inch by 12 inch cutting mat, where we will actually be cutting out our sunflower design. So let's come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on continue. All right, so this is where we actually set our base material cut settings. Now, since we are using the StarCraft HD permanent adhesive vinyl, well then I'm gonna be using the premium vinyl setting. And you actually get to that by coming over here and selecting browse on materials. Now, if you are using a Cricut Explore device, make sure that your dial is turned over to custom and then all this should be available to you. But I'm gonna click on browse on materials and then do a search for premium. And I'm gonna go ahead and select premium vinyl right here and then come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and click on done. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and load our vinyl onto our cutting mat. So I'm gonna grab my StarCraft HD and then just lay this out. And I usually like to go ahead and grab my little squeegee tool right here and then just go ahead and rub this out as well. And then we can go ahead and load this into our cutting machine. All right, so our first mat is done cutting and our second one is about to start. Now, whenever I'm actually removing my vinyl from my mat, what I like to do is actually flip the mat over and then peel the mat away from the vinyl instead of the other way around. That just really helps prevent any damage from occurring to your material. All right, so to weed all this out, I am obviously using my favorite weeding tool that is currently on the market. And this is the pin pin weeding tool right here. This guy is just basically magic. It's just so good. And it works amazingly for weeding, for weeding out little small intricate details or really just about anything. So with this, we're basically weeding in reverse. So what we would normally leave behind, we are removing. And we would normally remove, we're leaving behind to create a stencil. And as you can see right here, here is our, our stencil. <laughs> All right, so now for the petals of our sunflower. All right, so whenever it comes time to actually applying your permanent vinyl to a surface like this, it can present some challenges because, well, the permanent vinyl does not want to stick to a surface that is this textured and this uneven. So no matter what type of transfer tape you're using, and this stuff, in my opinion, is the best, but no matter what type you're using, even this, it can still be a little bit too sticky because, well, the permanent vinyl does not want to adhere to a surface like this. So naturally, the, the transfer tape wants to pull the vinyl back up with it. So what I'm going to do is show you a couple little tips or tricks or hacks if you even want to call it that on how to actually get the vinyl over to a surface like this just just a little bit easier but first things first let me just say this i see a lot a lot of times in different groups of people recommending to other people to apply heat to the vinyl to actually get it to adhere down to the surface a little bit better 
I do not recommend doing that. Basically all craft permanent adhesive vinyl on the market is PVC based. And whenever you apply direct heat to a PVC vinyl like that, it can release toxic fumes, which is no bueno, no good. And, and we do not want that. So, so please do not do that. Now, whenever it comes time to actually applying a big piece of vinyl like this right here, what I'm actually gonna be doing is basically applying the vinyl straight to the doormat without any type of transfer tape whatsoever. You can use transfer tape, especially if your design is a little bit more detailed. However, I find this to be on the easier side of things. So what I'm gonna do is basically just lift up my vinyl from the backing paper. And I'm basically gonna fold that backing paper underneath of itself and then apply this down to the doormat. Okay, and then very, very carefully, I'm gonna start peeling that backing paper out from underneath of itself, just like so. Going pretty slow, because we do wanna make sure that everything lays down the way it needs to go. And we also wanna make sure that the vinyl doesn't stick to itself either. It actually really, really helps to keep your hand on the vinyl down here at one end, or if you even have a helper that can hold it down here at the end, even better. All right, so there we go. So what I'm gonna do now is basically kind of reposition this because as you can see, it um, it got a little crooked during that process, which is completely fine. We can go ahead and just kind of move this around just a little bit, just very, very carefully, making sure that nothing is folding in on itself or anything like that. All right, so now that that is actually positioned where I need it to be, I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some of this wide painter's tape right here and basically go about actually taping down all along the edges, making sure that all this is covered as much as possible because we do not want any of the overspray from our flex seal hitting any of that and ruining our mat. So I'm just basically gonna pull this off and then just tape it down. Now having this blue painter's tape kind of helping hold down the vinyl around the doormat will actually help out a little bit, keeping that vinyl in place for whenever you do go to carry this outside. However, even still, I do recommend placing the, the doormat onto a flat, sturdy surface so that it doesn't move around too much and kind of dislodge or displace that vinyl. All right, so as far as this design right here, so as you can see, there are some small little details inside of the petals. I'm not too concerned with that. I'm already pretty much counting on losing most of those whenever we do transfer this over to the doormat. So again, I'm not too concerned with that. However, since this does have more details, I am gonna go ahead and actually use the transfer tape. However, before applying the transfer tape, what I'm gonna do is actually, first of all, unroll it with a sticky side facing up towards me and trim off that transfer tape. And before actually applying this to our vinyl, what I'm gonna do is actually apply this to my t-shirt a couple of times, just to get rid of some of that tackiness or stickiness. That way it will actually help the vinyl actually stick down to that surface a little bit better without wanting to pull it back up. All right, so that should do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this back down onto the countertop here with the sticky side facing up towards me. And I'm gonna take my vinyl here and then apply this down face first onto the transfer tape. And I'm really not gonna burnish this down too much because again, I don't want this, the transfer tape sticking too much to this vinyl. All right, so that should do the trick. So let's go ahead and move this all outside and get started painting. All right, so one of the really important things to remember whenever you are spraying the Flex Seal onto the doormat is to make sure to keep the nozzle pointed straight down towards the ground and also parallel with the ground. You don't wanna be spraying at any type of an angle because you don't want to risk actually getting that Flex Seal up underneath of that stencil or underneath of your vinyl. Whenever spraying my Flex Seal onto my doormat, I do like to give this a really thick coat just to ensure this is gonna last as long as possible. Once I'm done spraying, I do like to give this at least 30 minutes to dry. And whenever it comes time to applying my piece of vinyl with the transfer tape, what I like to do is actually apply it down to the doormat and then very, very carefully, very slowly start pulling back on the transfer tape. I find that if you pull it really slow at a really, really sharp angle, it helps out a ton. Also, if you're able to actually hold your hand down onto the vinyl and kind of hold that down to the surface or to the doormat while you're peeling it back, that helps out a ton. And it works even better if you have a little helper to help you out as well. Now 
Now, if you all liked today's episode or if you learned something new, it would honestly mean the world to me and help me out so much here on YouTube. If you took just two seconds to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. Also, while you're at it, if you are new around here to this channel, well then you may want to consider stamping that subscribe button and ringing that little bell for all the notifications because you do not want to miss out on a single crafty minute. Thank you all so, so much for watching today's episode. It truly does mean the absolute world to me. And until next time, stay crafty.